going to be parting ways, but I do appreciate all the concern and prayers for us. For everyone's doing well. Um, and after surgery, and she is recovering home. They didn't go to church today. And she, um, but she's doing good. It's so great. That's amen. And so we appreciate those prayers. First Corinthians chapter number nine. Second Corinthians chapter number nine. I didn't say first, but second Corinthians nine. Being missions emphasis month, I was praying and thinking and felt directed to look at this thought this morning. I'm gonna have a lot of ground to cover, so I'll be kind of quickly getting into it. But second Corinthians chapter nine, let's look at verse number six down through verse number fifteen. Second Corinthians nine, verse six. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, for his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything all bountifulness, which causes uh, through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but it aboundeth or abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your best subjection unto the gospel of Christ. And for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Look down in verse number uh, six. Oh, I'm sorry, verse number ten. Here's the, the thought this morning, the first uh, phrase. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower. And that's exactly what giving faith promise is, is ministering seed to the sower. The seed in the Bible is typified of the word of God. You know, when the Bible says a man went out and sowed seed and uh, there were some thorny ground, there was some uh, ground with rocks, there was some uh, good ground, and he said the, the seed is the word of God. Now, you'll, you'll not find any greater chapter in the Bible dealing with this matter of giving to the gospel being spread around the world than 2 Corinthians 8 and verse, uh, chapter 9 and even chapter number 10. Those chapters deal more with this matter of giving uh, to the gospel being spread around the world than any other uh, three chapters or chapters combined in the Bible. That word uh, ministering, that's what he said, ministereth seed to the sower. The word ministering means this, according aid or supplies, it ministries things needful. And that's exactly what missions giving is. It is giving the supply to the missionary the things that they need in order to carry the gospel around the world. Now what the context here is, is obvious in verse number uh, 1 of chapter 8. It gives us what Paul is talking about. He's talking about this, the churches that were in this location of Macedonia. These churches in Macedonia, they had a... They had caught the vision of getting the gospel around the world. Obviously, we know that going and committing in those days was a lot different than it is today. You couldn't get on a boat uh, and uh, a big ship and sail.
sail somewhere uh, quickly as they do today, even though they had ships uh, that they weren't they weren't steam powered or they weren't even uh, uh, you know uh, as as suitable for travel as the the sailboats they have today. So getting the gospel around the world was a challenge, sure. and not only was it a challenge uh, on their body, it also was a challenge on their pocketbook as well. So they needed to get supplies to Paul and those that went out from Jerusalem to get the gospel around the world. And they did it just like I do it, and just like this church does it, and just like any other church does it today. They did it primarily through financial gifts. And, uh, and through gifts, whether it was financial or clothing or food, because things were a little harder to come by than they are today. So real quickly, I want us to look at, at their giving. Uh, how they, they gave, the way they gave. And I want us to go to verse number three. I have three or four things here, and I want us to look at them. Verse number three, look at that phrase. Well, we'll read the whole verse. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Now I want to look at a few ways they gave. First of all, it, it, it tells us, for to their power. So I would say, first of all, they gave sustainably. They gave according to what they had. That's what he means. Or to their power. They gave out of the resources that they had. Basically, they budgeted their giving. Part of their giving was they had it and they budgeted it and they gave it. Now, our society we live in today, people don't budget money. They are impulsive buyers. Uh, matter of fact, if this is the way people buy today, they don't ask how much does this <coughs> item cost. They ask how much are the monthly payments. Now that is not the right way to run finances. I'm not Dave Ramsey, and I'm not here to tell you how to manage your money. You probably know better how to manage it than I do. But I'll tell you this, if you don't manage your money, your money will manage you. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you this, if you'll watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. Uh, we, we live in a society that people don't manage money. And you know what? If you don't manage, if we don't manage money, then we're not going to have any money to give. That's, right. That's kind of common sense, isn't it? Uh, you know, God just ain't going to drop a $100 bill down from the sky when we spit all kind of money on other things and expect us and trust us to put it in the mission offer next month. Mm -hmm. No, uh, it's just how that goes. Uh, some people, they made bad decisions and they're in great debt. Uh, you know, they're in debt, and they have what I would call bad debt. This is debt on things that are depreciating. This is debt on things that uh, aren't really valuable, uh, you know, and uh, the, the things that aren't making them money. That's, that's bad debt. And, you know, the best thing to do is to look at that and confront that and do your best to get out of debt, the bad debt. Now, a man's not going to be able to buy his house cash, I wouldn't imagine. And most people, uh, you know, we, we don't buy our, our vehicles uh, cash. I understand you have to have some debt. People go around and say, the Bible says, oh, no man, anything. Well, every month I owe the light man something, you know, and I owe the tax man something, and I owe, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever it might be. So that's not what the Bible means when it says, oh, man, no man, anything. He's not talking about not having any debt. We all have debt. But uh, they gave by budgeting their money. That's what the Bible says. They gave to their power. That's exactly what he's saying. They gave out of the resources that they had. And if we, us collectively, me personally, you personally, if we are wise with our money, then we'll be able to give out of what we have. Dave Ramsey does say this. Live, now you need to live like no one else. So one day you can live like no one else. And uh, you know, it's hard to do, isn't it? Uh, when everybody's driving a nice new car and everybody's going on these vacations and, and we're still stuck with this car we're tinkering on and we haven't been in vacations for six years. You know? <laughs> My brother used to work with a man and they would take a big vacation every year and all go on the credit card and stay. And you know that fellow would pay on that credit card all the way up to the next year. He'd finally get it paid off two or three weeks before they go on vacation. And then he'd go on vacation again. He constantly lived in debt on that credit card because of vacation. Now that's somebody who's not really managing money. But the Bible 
Bible says they gave their power. That's called sustainably giving. And then notice what it also says. He says they gave uh, uh, for to their power, I bear record, yea, beyond their power. So not only they gave sustainably, they gave what I would call supernaturally. Beyond their power. Now that's amazing. When you look at what Paul is saying, this these churches of Macedonia, they were giving what they could afford and then they went above that and they gave beyond what they had. Mm -hmm. now, that's what he's saying. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, there's some people that, that uh, you know, their faith isn't small. Faith is, is something that grows. It's not something that comes in extra large. Faith doesn't come in all sizes. You know, I'm going down here and get, come down to the altar after the preacher preaches and I'm going to order me extra large faith. <laughs> That's not how that ball bounces. Faith grows. Yeah, sure. It matures. You know, it's like us. You know, hopefully, we, we, we get a little wiser as we grow older. Nothing's worse than seeing somebody that's got enough age to be wise and they're still ignorant. You know, that's discouraging. You know, the older you get, the smarter you're supposed to become. So it's faith. And something else about faith. Faith will not grow unless it's exercised. Yeah. <clears throat> unless it's fit to the test. It's like any, any muscle in our body. You know, if you sit around and don't walk and do anything, your body kind of gets a little stiff and gets a little, you, you know, your muscles get a little weak. But a man that exercises every day and lifts weights and runs and what have you, his body grows stronger. And that's how faith is. So these people, they, they, they exercised a little bit of faith and they saw, uh, they saw the money they had and they were willing to give that, that the gospel would go around the world. And when they did that, they saw, hey, God supplied the need. We're going to give a little bit more. And they gave beyond what they saw. It's amazing how that works. And we'll never be able to give uh, supernaturally until we're willing to give what we have. Right. We have to start somewhere. So how was this accomplished? They didn't have the ability to do it alone. Uh, but they had a deep desire in their hearts to get the gospel around the world through Paul and the saints. But they couldn't. They couldn't go. Uh, they, they couldn't go around the world. So they, 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 they saw Paul and the, the, these, what we would call missionaries going. So they gave in order to get the gospel around the world. They knew there was a need. And uh, they, they knew that it wasn't possible for them to all go. But they saw that some were going. So by faith, they trusted God and gave beyond their power to see the gospel. Look in verse number 8. I like what he says in verse number 8 of, uh, of chapter number 9. Chapter number 9, verse number 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Right. That ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. That's faith giving. Seeking God in prayer on on a, an amount that God would have us, or me, or you, uh, as a family give, and then being obedient to whatever the Lord says. Uh, and notice in verse number two, uh, he says here of chapter eight. Now I'm going to keep flipping back. Verse number two of chapter eight. He's, he's talking about the churches of Macedonia. He says, "How that in what great trial of affliction." The abundance of their joy and their what? Deep poverty abounded unto their rich, uh, riches of their liberality. So think about that. Now, they weren't giving because the economy was booming. <laughs> they weren't giving because they got a pay raise. They weren't giving because they had a sack, a sack pile of money set back. They were giving when they were in great trial, when there was a pandemic. They were giving when there was a recession. Amen. They were giving when they hadn't got a pay raise in here. They were in deep poverty. You, you're, you, in spite of all of these terrible conditions, they did not give grudgingly. They did not give sparingly. But the 
Bible says they gave liberal. Amen. Liberally. That's the only kind of liberal I want to be known by is a liberal giver. I don't want to be a liberal anything, but a giver, I want to be a liberal. Amen. I want to liberally give. And you know what this was? The, the Bible says that the, the, the great trial of their affliction, the abundance of their joy. The Bible says God loves a what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. How did they do all this? They did all of this by faith. I'm sure, listen now, I'm sure they weren't spending the money that God was supplying to them on themselves. You see, you've heard the little saying, uh, what is it, Akron, faith, for all I trust him. That's the way this church and every church gives beyond their power and gets the gospel around the world. Uh, we, we, must, we, we must not look at what we're able to do financially and missions, but we must believe in what God is able to do through us. You've heard the saying, I'm certain, God will give more through you than he will give to you. <laughs> that is a true statement. I'm telling you this morning, not by something I've read or something I've studied, it's something I personally have experienced for these well over 25 years of giving to missions, you know, probably 30 years uh, giving to missions, that God will give through someone that gives. That's just how it, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Right. Good measures, pressed down, shaking the others. I mean, if, I'm telling you this morning, if a person by faith trusts God to give to the cause of Christ, the, the, the gospel, this is not prosperity, gospel. This is not preaching because see, this this is, prosperity gospel is this. Prosperity gospel is give so you can get rich. <laughs> right. That's prosperity. Yeah. Give, give. You watch these uh, these games on TV, they say send your seed money and God will bless you. Their, their, their gimmick, their sales pitch is you send us money and you'll be rich like we are. <laughs> That's not missions giving. Missions giving is not so we can increase our, our giving so we can buy a new car. Mm. Missions giving is we're going to give what God's laid on our, our heart, and we'll trust Him for that, and we'll find out that God will supply that need Amen. every time. Absolutely. And that's what He says in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 15 16. This is what He says. You can turn, but I've got it written down on my notes here. Not boasting of the things without our measure that is of other men's labor. But having hope, what's it say? When your faith is increased, that ye shall be enlarged, that we shall be enlarged by you. And he says to preach the gospel with reason beyond. So when your faith is increased, then we're going to increase. That's what Paul is saying. They trusted and believed God in faith. Now the gospel is going in places they can never get to. I, I got to hurry up here. They gave. Uh, sustainably, they gave supernaturally, verses 5 through 11. 11, they gave spiritually. Look at verse 8 and verse 9, in chapter 8. For I speak not by commandment, but by occasion, for the forwardness of others, to prove the sincerity of your love. So you know the spiritual giving? They gave passionately. In verse number 9, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that for, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. We've already discussed how they gave uh, out of, uh, with joy and they gave liberally. But notice what Paul says in verse number 9. He uses that same word. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich and he became poor, uh, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that he through his poverty, that's what it said in verse number two. That's how they were given. They were in deep poverty. So what he was saying is that an example is the Lord loved, so he gave, and now they love, so they gave. You, you, you know that you can't, you know the little saying, you can give without loving but you can't love without giving. The 
Bible says this, for God so what? Love the world that he what? Gave. Gave. They gave passionately. You take a, 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 a young man that falls in love with a young lady, and he give her, give her everything she wants. You take a, a grandparent that has a, a new grandchild that they're willing to, it's, it's, it's a reaction of love. Love is giving. They gave persistently in verse number 10 and verse number 11 of this chapter. Paul is admonishing the churches. Uh, he's talking about their promise. That's where we get the idea of faith, promise, giving. Uh, talking about how a year ago uh, uh, in verse number 10, for here and I gave my advice for this, this is expedient for you who had begun before not only to do but also uh, to be forward a year ago and then he talks about performing and the doing of it. He's talking about their, their, their promise giving. That's where the idea of the concept of faith promise giving. That's where the concept of a annual faith promise meeting is, is, is birthed from. Paul is talking to them about a year ago they promised this giving and he's admonishing them to you know continue. He's encouraging them to continue what they said they were supposed They gave persistently. They gave passionately. But I have to say that what really what really gets it is they gave personally. Hmm. Verse number five, he says, and this, and this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves. Look at verse number 12, chapter 8. For if there be first a willing mind, they gave themselves. You see, sure, a man that has makes a lot of money, God's blessed him with a lot of money. He'll be able to give, drop money in the plate, but it's not. That's not the kind of giving that sustains a good missions program. What sustains a good missions program is when people give themselves, and when people give themselves, they'll be willing to give their means. Someone that has the means but hasn't given themselves. It's not, they're not going to be faithful. Right. But someone who gives themselves, besides the supernatural God supplying, they're going to be faithful regardless. And then, I don't have time to, to cover this, but verse 14, he uses this terminology, but by an equality. They gave uh, simultaneously. Everyone was giving. Everyone. You see, you had some that had a lot. You had some that had a little. The, the man that had a lot, he wasn't carrying the missions program. The people were carrying the missions program collectively, simultaneously. Everyone was giving. That's a church that has a strong missions program. Not when two or three that make big money give the majority. Sure, obviously, if this man makes $100,000 a year, this man makes $25,000 a year, and they both love the Lord, you know the man that makes the more is going to give the more. If they both love the Lord. Right. But the church program will be what it ought to be, is when this man gives, and this man gives, and this man gives, and this man gives. Not when a handful is doing all the giving. Amen. That's right. Everybody is giving by inequality. By inequality. I don't understand how the Lord works, but I'm going to tell you when people fall in love with the Lord, the Lord will bless them, and they'll be willing to give of what they have. Well, time won't allow me to really get into it. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it all this month. But nothing is so important to the Lord as missions. And I really enjoy doing the mission. I, I'm just amazed. I am literally amazed about this concept of giving. Mm -hmm. How I've seen the Lord just supply the need. I, 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 don't, I don't get into all the details, and I don't say much about it. But several years ago, I said, Lord, I feel like I need to increase our missions giving. And um, I didn't put a fleece out, but I, I kind of said, 
if, if this will happen and that will happen, Lord, I, I'm going to take those funds and give them all to missions. And sure enough, these things happened, and uh, we were able to just give those things to missions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see what I what we were given some years ago to what we're doing today and how the Lord sustains that. Yeah. It's a blessing. And we didn't go pour them out and, and the Lord just, just did it. And it does that to everybody. Well, I don't know your program, but that's great. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the gospel. That's really the whole thing about missions. We don't give just to let somebody go on a vacation overseas.